Hey guys, and welcome back to That LP Show. The name of the game is Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. With everything situated here on the GFS Olympus, I think it's time we head down to the planet Norian and assist our fellow hunters in getting the planetary defense system back online. Really? Throughout the entire planet, you you only had one cannon, one cannon for for anti-aircraft purposes. Okay, you you just you don't have another one on the other side of the planet. Th that's it. That's that's all you got. Just w one cannon. Okay. Well, looks like you guys need all the help you can get. All right. Let's start by heading through this door. Shoot all of the locks. And we gotta wait for the blue barrier to fade away before we can walk through. There we go. It won't hurt you. It's more of just an invisible barrier, so you can't walk can't walk forward until it goes away. But anyway, we get our first major power up of the game. Well, outside of missiles, but you know that's something that Samus always gets. And it's the grapple lasso. Yeah, not the grapple beam, just the grapple lasso. We, you know, there's. You know, multiple functions for the grapple beam, and this one is only for grabbing stuff. We'll get the swingy one later. Anyway, here's some lore right here. If you're playing along in the NTSC version, this is going to be a different set of lore because they did change uh, the location of different lore logs uh, through each version. But uh, they're all roughly spread out through the same exact locations. They just switched the positions of about three of them, and this is the first of those three. This one is about the planet Norian. Though located on the fringe of the Federation, the planet Norian is of great importance. The military maintains a strong presence in the sector, and the base on Norian is often the first line of defense against enemies that operate outside of GF space. Originally a barren orb incapable of sustaining life, a sophisticated terraforming project designed by Aurora Unit 486 has turned Norian into a hardy forest world. Well, wasn't that nice of it. The 486 that I used to work with could barely do anything. Alright, let's go ahead and scan this. Anything that kind of looks like a visor, you know, like this thing, it kind of looks like a visor, then you, you gotta scan it. And then, of course, it shows the hand telling us that we gotta use motion controls. Make sure, once again, make sure you, uh, have your uh, Wii Remote pointed out a little bit before pressing A, so you don't have to pull very far, then turn, then push. Elevator go up the hole. And as soon as this door opens right here, get ready to blast away at that crawl tank. Because it kind of sneaks up on you. Alright, get the scan visor open again. Scan the door. It's a special kind of door. It's a mounted blast shield. A strong pull should be enough to rip the lock from its brackets. 
Mounted blast shields are unique in that they have they often have a primary locking system. These systems commonly come in the form of multiple release locks that must be hit in a sequential order. Once this locking system is disengaged, the shield can be removed. Weapon fire is insufficient to damage the shield, but it can easily be torn off with a strong pull, and that's where the grapple lasso comes in. Normally, there are locks that we have to shoot, but uh, I guess just because they want to show off the grapple point at this point... Uh, we don't have to do that. We'll have to do that to the next one. Anyway, go ahead, lock on, and uh, flick your nunchuck forward, similar to casting your um, lure in The Legend of Zelda, you know, Twilight Princess, and then just jerk it back, and that'll yank it off. And we'll be using that to uh, pull off blast shields and other, you know, move sort and other types of debris, and we'll even use it for enemy shields a little later. That is broken and we will not be able to do anything about it until way later in the game let's move on oh arrow mines okay i don't think i mentioned it before but a good way to uh avoid their fire as you're uh sh as you're waiting for them to take their shields down is to just strafe back and forth yeah you gotta you, you gotta be kind of quick and sometimes when you're uh when you're strafing back and forth you gotta Kind of let go so you can turn especially since this is kind of a curved hallway if you look at the map up there it's in a horseshoe shape anyway with those sets of arrow mines out of the way any kind of a uh, object that you find that gl shimmers gold like that you can actually pull with the grapple lasso and we'll see that there's a hand panel behind it all right hidden passage for the morph ball And these gusts of air will just uh, carry you through. Don't worry, they won't actually hurt you. We do have something coming up that can hurt you. Not too much of a threat. This guy right here. Now, we can't get over there because of the, the air blowing. We've got to wait for it. In the meantime, don't worry too much about this guy. He can cause damage, but he doesn't really cause that much damage. So, you know, don't, don't freak out if you can't always avoid its attacks. But there we go, another uh, missile expansion right there, if I can make it up. And there we go, now we can carry 10 missiles. Yeah, but you can easily avoid the, that guy anyway, because you can see that red beam comes out and uh, marks where it's going to shoot. And there's, there's a delay of about a second and a half, so it's not really like he's all that hard to avoid. Go ahead, remove all of this stuff with the grapple lasso and roll on through. Can't do anything uh, there quite yet, but we do want to eventually end up there once we're done here. All right, another energy tank right on the beaten path. Can't miss it. If you do miss it, well, then you're taking a lot of damage because that's the, the floor down there damages you. Anyway, these panels jut in and out, but uh, if you wait for them to come out and then just hold left... And, uh, yeah, as soon as you start going, as soon as they pull back in and don't stop, then you shouldn't have much of a hard time getting past them before they come back out. And, uh, yeah, don't worry. You can't, you can't save those guys, so we didn't miss out on a, we didn't miss out on a blue credit or anything special like that. All right, go ahead, scan this door. And this is a red blast shield. Red blast shield is invulnerable to most weapon systems. Explosive damage may break it. Red Blast Shields contain high amounts of brimstone within their metals and are easily damaged by explosive blast. Once shattered, the Blast Shield will remain destroyed. Just like Red Doors in every other Metroid game, missiles do the trick. Alright, and here we get a map station. Just walk into the hologram to download the map. Don't worry, unlike save stations, map stations are not scannable for the logbook, so we didn't miss anything there. All right, and we have three scannable lores right here. This is Galactic Federation lore. They keep logbook entries on all of the bounty hunters, I guess. Uh, not one on us, though. If they do keep one on Samus, then I don't know where it is. But this one is on Hunter Gandreda. Subject homeworld unknown. Possesses metamorphic abilities similar to biomorphs of Jovia 12. Well, then she is probably from Jovia 12. Did you, did you ever check? 
Anyway, can assume the form of uh, can assume the form and abilities of most living things, including bioforms considerably larger than the subject. Scans are unable to determine subject's age, but psyche valves suggest a high degree of youthfulness. Intel suggests that bounty hunting is akin to a sport for her, one she enjoys considerably. Subject perceives the veteran hunter Samus Aran as her chief rival, a rival she intends to surpass as soon as possible. It's a friendly rivalry, don't worry. And this is on Hunter Rundus. Subject is a native of Frigus, a moon of planet Bez-3 known primarily for ice mining. The Frigisian ability to manipulate and generate ice has come in handy in Subject's career as a bounty hunter. Intel suggests he enjoys hunting, to the point where he keeps trophies from all of the targets he's successfully captured or killed in his career. Subject is proud, cocky, and arrogant, and considers himself without rival in his field. Yeah, characteristics that are typical of characters voiced by Christopher Sabat, who also voices Vegeta in the Dragon Ball series. And this is on Hunter Gore. We actually scanned him himself earlier in the game when we were going through that checkpoint on the Olympus. Subject is a veteran of the Liberation War of Wotan 7. Only 6% of Subject's birth body remains. The rest is state-of-the-art cyberware. Despite his career in heavy cybernetic modification, Subject is known for his high level of empathy and compassion. Gore is rather gentle and approaches situations logically, but is not the most skilled of fighters. Intel suggests he even has a sense of humor. Subject has often championed the weak, poor, and downtrodden, working for free or giving bounty money earned to the victims of his targets. Subject can merge his cybernetic body into larger mechanisms, including gunships and fighter craft. This merging will alter Gore's personality, and he will become incredibly aggressive and violent. Data indicates a high proficiency with computer infiltration and manipulation. High level of mechanical empathy with artificial intelligence. So, he has feelings for AI? Wow, I wonder if he has a boner for any of the Aurora units. That's kind of weird. Alright, as we're passing through this hallway, we want to take things a little slowly because as soon as we see, yeah, and hear that rumbling, that means debris is going to fall out. Just clear it out with a charge shot. A missile might also work, but a charge shot doesn't waste any ammo, so just go ahead and use that. Once again, happens right here. Be careful as you're crossing paths here because this flame does keep shooting out periodically. But before walking forward, we got another thing we want to scan over here, and it is Jump Mine. Anti-personnel unit rises in air and explodes once engaged. The jump mine was developed by the space pirates as a cheap alternative to an armed trooper. The jump mine scans its surroundings until it detects an enemy target. Then it triggers a small thruster, jumping a set distance in the air. Once launched, its weapon pod is engaged, saturating the local area with fire. It explodes afterward to prevent use by enemy forces. So, I mean, there actually are real-life landmines that do that. They're called bouncing betties. But, yeah, as long as you, you can shoot them from a distance, so you don't have to worry about them. Yeah, of course there would be trouble going into a new wide open area. Why not? Alright, just a few pirate militia right here. Let's go ahead and take them out real quick. And then we have a new enemy, so let's go ahead and scan it. And this is Pirate Trooper, battle ready and vicious, crudely enhanced by Phazon. The Space Pirate military forces continue to use Phazon, of course they do, including a new Phazon enhancement system. Basic armament includes an assault rifle and energy scythe, both powered by Phazon. EMP grenades are often employed against power armored foes. A new dash jet system provides increased mobility. Other than that, eh, just shoot them like you would any other. Um, they do take two shots, unlike the militia. But other than that, not too difficult. Ooh, scan this thing real quick. If you don't get a chance to scan it right now because it does fly away, you, it will come back. I assure you, it will come back. But anyway, this is the Space Pirate ATC. Well-armored transport. Vulnerable. Forward vent is vulnerable. We will be taking advantage of that. The Space Pirate Armored Tactical Carrier, ATC, is surprisingly well-built and armored. A forward-mounted heat vent is the only vulnerable spot. Tri-beam cannons help the unit deal out damage while on missions. Designed for rapid transit to and from hot zones, the unit is not designed for long-term engagements. It has a relatively small fuel supply, a sacrifice made for heavier armament and armor. 
All right, and a new enemy right here. This is Shield Pirate Militia. Battle shields deflect attacks, but can be pulled off with Grapple Beam. Some members of the some members of the Pirate Militia have been granted use of regular Army Trooper equipment. I guess they sucked enough dick to get that privilege. This unit has been given the portable battle shield. Its portability is its weakness, however. Remove it from the Pirate's grip to eliminate its primary defense system. The shield is also susceptible to face on base attacks. In other words, all you gotta do is yoink, and it becomes a regular Pirate Militia. One charge shot will do. Yoink! And you're out of here. Okay, another new enemy. Go ahead, scan it real quick. And this is Aero Trooper. Jetpack provides aero aerial mobility. Homing attacks are recommended. Yeah, we've run into these guys plenty before in the Prime series. Aero Troopers are dangerous foes, but their lack of armor leaves them vulnerable to explosive blasts. A weakness also lies in the jetpack. Igniting it will allow the pack to be separated from the pilot. They use remote twin they use twin remote attack pods to engage targets. The attack pods are capable of using a particle cannon or a helix missile pod. They can tap their phase on power unit to warp from point to point. So yeah, uh, missiles or charge shots. If you use missiles for their homing capabilities, keep in mind that uh, you shouldn't just try to spam them because as you can see, because of their warping capabilities, they're able to break your lock. They're able to break your uh, target lock. So go ahead, shoot, and just wait a few seconds to see if they break your lock and then lock on once again. Yeah, they're really good about doing that. And I keep missing, wonderful. Whatever, charge shots will also do. Could probably just grab these missiles right here. All right, remember that ATC? It is back. Go ahead, just shoot this forward vent over and over and over and over again. I wouldn't recommend locking onto this, however. You know, try, try to just shoot it with your free aim because if you lock onto it, then you won't necessarily have a clear shot at the vent. So you might as well just use free aim so you always have that clear shot. I guess if you want to, you can hit it with charge shots, which are a little more powerful. That's if you manage to hit it because it does bob back and forth kind of quick. So yeah, it's easy to miss. So yeah, just uh, strafe back and forth to uh, avoid getting hit as much as possible and just pelt it with rapid fire and you should do just fine. This guy going all Iceman from X-Men. Cool guys don't look at explosions. They blow things up and then walk away. These pirates are more fragile than they appear. I just received word that the Federation is allowing all bounty hunters to use ship command devices. You should now be able to remotely command your ship and land it here. Don't forget to perform suit maintenance and data backup if you need. Generator A is just through those doors. While you head that way, I'll activate the generator on the west side. Between the two of us, this should be a breeze. Okay, so these things popping up, we saw them before when we first landed on the Olympus. They're the, uh... They're the landing beacons, and wherever you see these, you can actually open up your scan visor, and you'll see an icon here. Hold down the Z button for a few seconds, and you can command your ship to land at these places. We always did have the command visor from the beginning of the game, but we weren't allowed to use it because we weren't authorized. Yeah, sound familiar? Hey, look, Commander Dane is giving Samus Aran orders. Samus is taking orders from a man, but she's a badass bounty hunter. Why didn't anybody whine about this, huh? Why didn't anybody whine about this? Then again, he's not telling us to walk through uh, hell for a few minutes before telling us to... Uh, equip our various suit. That that was kind of stupid, and I can't really defend that. Anyway, with our ship here, um, there's no reason to actually take off and fly to another area since we don't have any other areas to fly to right now. Um, save if you want to. I'm just going to enter the ship real quick so I can heal. All right, and let's move on to Generator A. 
Let's get our uh, charge shot ready because there are crawl tanks, as you can see on the mini map there. Well, you couldn't see that they're crawl tanks, but you know you clearly saw that there were hostiles. Newsflash, they're crawl tanks. There we go. All right, now here is where we shoot that uh, locking system. It's pretty easy. The lights up here, shoot them, and then rip the rip the shield off. Come on with the load times, please. Any day. Oh, thought I was going to have to edit that out. Oh, boy, what are you guys doing to the generator? Okay, well, let's just wait for all of the shaking to stop, because if we try to run out there right now with all the shaking and all the debris falling, there's a possibility that we could get hit by something and take damage. All right, looks like everything's calmed down. Let's get the scan visor ready, because we have a new enemy that's about to pop up. Let's scan him a little bit, even though we pro... Yeah, I didn't think we'd be able to scan it all the way. Keep an eye on the mini-map there. All right, let's go ahead and... No, no, don't scan that. Yeah, that's a problem with the scan visor in this game. Is sometimes because of the motion controls, um, you, it causes you to accidentally scan something larger that's near a smaller target. But anyway, this is the Jolly Roger drone. Vast and fragile aerial drone. Fire bursts of phaser... Fires bursts of phase on energy. The Jolly Roger drone is designed for quick aerial maneuvers, but this comes at the cost of survivability. The fragile armor of the unit is vulnerable to weapon fire of any type. The Jolly Roger is based on Federation tech, but has been considerably upgraded. Powered by Phazon, the mechanoid can be a serious threat in battle, especially in groups. Eh, this is, th these are those things that were actually shooting at us when we were going for that missile expansion in the air duct so yeah i guess in groups if you don't know what you're doing they can be kind of a pain in the ass but other than that um just keep an eye on your mini map up in the uh, upper left hand corner because they do start uh, circling around really fast and you can't target them when they're doing that so if you're able to uh fight the war wasps the, the war wasps that are sent out by the hive mecha in metroid prime 1 without a problem then you should be able to take these guys out no problem because it's a similar strategy in a way we have some debris over there let's go ahead shoot it out of the way with the charge shot go ahead and uh pull twist push Okay, and all we have to do is get over there, hit that hand panel, and we activate Generator A. Hope they're all this easy. Hmm, those look an awful lot like Morph Ball Tunnels. Samus, are you reading me? Something big is happening up here. Uh oh. It's a rock with tentacles. Oh, and I recognize that blue stuff. Samus, it's heading right at you. That's why the pirates disabled the defense system. They intend to smash this thing into Noria. Get that cannon back online, or everyone down there is as good as dead. But they're on the planet too. Ooh, 100 kills. Yeah, we actually get a friend voucher for every 100 kills that we make. Uh, up to 1,000, that is. Uh-oh. Uh, Samus, you could be running out there to help them. You could be running out there to help them. Because they're the pirates are enhanced by Phazon. How is this go guy going to... Oh... Well, All clear. what is your deal, buddy? That was out of nowhere. This is a Federation PED Marine. Advanced armor suit is equipped with Phazon Enhancement Device. Really, Federation? You're screwing with Phazon, too? <sighs> The Federation has created a system that utilizes Phazon to increase the power of the armor worn by GF Marines. While active, the Phazon unit enhances the attack and defense systems of the armor suit. Buddy, you do know that the stuff is poisonous? 
I mean, it caused the Chozo to go insane. All right, you do that, Marine. I still think it's a stupid idea. I mean, the Galactic Federation messing with Phazon? Could things get any worse? Oh, Ridley. Well, I guess that answers my question. Hey, hey, asshole, it's me. The lethal bounty hunter whose parents you killed. And he's ignoring me. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to kill him next time. And until next time, thank you for watching that LP show. And have a one that is good.